As I arrive in Jakarta, I see a vibrant and bustling city. Put aside the chaotic and crowded traffic, there is another world. The world of the paranormal. I have learned that it has become a very lucrative business. How much of it is entertainment and how much of it is real? In this episode, we will explore the world of the paranormal here in Jakarta. with about 12 million people living here, from billionaires to homeless souls. A city which is modern, yet submerged in culture and tradition, and a deep-rooted belief in the paranormal. Perplexing and yet very intriguing. Who would imagine that amidst this concrete jungle, congested traffic conditions, that there's a thriving paranormal industry. An industry that is not on the sidelines, not hidden nor shunned, but an industry that seems to be accepted by all, practiced by everyone. Spells to protect oneself or one's business, potions to win over someone's heart, curses to destroy one's enemies. Yes, all these exist here and are flourishing. I have made arrangements with one of the most well-known paranormal practitioners in Indonesia, Kang Mashrukan, and I will attend one of his paranormal classes. Kang Mashrukan is a professional parapsychologist and a practitioner of the paranormal arts. Unlike the traditional dukuns or bomo, Kang presents himself as an urban professional. He heads a successful business with offices in the major cities of Indonesia and has a long list of clients from Malaysia, Singapore and Hong Kong. Today, he is teaching me about the aura that exists in all of us and how we can tap into it. I knew of this service through my friends who have received treatment here. And I also checked the social media in the YouTube and the internet. I had my aura right here and I was also given special recitations to be read after doing my prayers. And Kang Mashrukan also prepared for me a drink that he has treated specially for me. I've now grown in confidence and this helps me in my career. When I meet the clients, I meet them with a newfound confidence that has helped me. Can you please explain to me a little bit about your history? I came from a family of paranormal practitioners. I inherited the skills from them. And I see them perform their paranormal services since young. In fact, I began to cure people when I was young. I cured them through various prayers. I didn't know how or why, but I just knew I could do it. When I became older and entered college, I noticed that the lecturers and academicians also believed in the paranormal. This further gave me the confidence to pursue a career in this field, but as a true professional. Have you received a client who has come from fake Dukun or who has been extremely confused? What did you do and how bad was the situation? Usually, they come to me when they have used up all their money. I also offer services for free because some of these people who have been conned by others and have finished their savings. I only ask them to put their total trust in me. Commercial paranormal. That really is, to me, quite interesting and after speaking to him, more intriguing. But I'm still very interested to see what else is out there in this commercial paranormal in Jakarta. (laughs) 
The paranormal scene in Jakarta is full of celebrities. Not celebrity clients, but celebrity shamans and dukuns. Some have managed to produce their own reality programs and have huge fan base. I am on my way to meet one of the more famous television shamans. One who has managed to change the public perception of what a local shaman should look like. Kiprana is one of the more popular television personalities who used to host Indonesia's highest rated paranormal program. Today, he continues to break new barriers by producing a weekly paranormal show for online broadcast. Kiprana, yeah. you have made a celebrity of yourself on television as a celebrity spiritualist. May I know what inspired you? The first reason was because I was scared. I enrolled in an Islamic school and learned the Quran. There I found I could see the unseen. I decided to study more Islamic spiritual techniques until I became a spiritualist. I entered the entertainment world by accident. There was a television show that was looking for a paranormal expert who didn't have a scary image. They approached me a few times, but I rejected at first, as I didn't feel confident facing the cameras. After five attempts, I agreed to give it a try. I tried to show that the supernatural world does exist, but I show how we should embrace it and not fall into a realm that we cannot control. The connotation used to describe the realm of the unseen is that we live in our world and they live in theirs. We cannot enter their realm, but they can enter ours. With this understanding, if we try to experience this supernatural world without the proper knowledge or a strong faith, it would be very dangerous. Where did you get your skills from? Where did this talent come from? I can say that this ability that I have is a gift from God. However, it was not an immediate thing. To be involved in this, you need to have tenacity and faith. Because if you ignore all this, you cannot succeed. I find this amusing. In reality, ghosts cannot be hunted. They can only be summoned. We are here at an old abandoned Catholic school to observe how Kiprana produces his online series, Jajak Spiritual or Spiritual Footsteps. The school was said to have been a site of a bloody riot many years ago that led to its closure, and since then it is reputed to be haunted. There was no problem at all. And personally, I've been working for a long while at this school as a security guard and now as a caretaker for the village. I've never seen or witnessed anything. But I do feel as if there is something here. For example, something would break the glass, sounds from the basement, and lights that suddenly cannot turn on. However, some have seen a girl with a long hair. Due to various unforeseen factors, the shoot for Kiprana's online show was delayed for nearly four hours. It is nearly midnight. According to him, he will first be releasing a few jenglots, which can be described as Indonesian imps, into the area and then we will witness what happens. There may be some differences here. Even though it's raining heavily, it has not stopped enthusiasts from coming to this area to watch us shoot Jajak Spiritual. I have also brought with me a collection of jenglots, which are shrunken entities that some others also called Kerak. Right now, I'm observing Kiprana Lewu conducting a ritual with regards to something I understand to be called jinglot, which is basically a figurine that looks as though it's carved, but it is believed to have shrunk from a human, a human with supernatural powers, but due to that rejected from the earth, so it couldn't be buried, and as such, it shrunk to become what it looks like. Let's see what unfolds here tonight. 
Jenglot ini. This Jenglot is also a being belonging to God. And what is more important for us to know is how we carry ourselves and what we need to understand about Jenglot. And in this manner, also understand our role in the eyes of God. And in doing so, understand that we do not have to use these beings for any purpose. The Ustas and Kiprana discussed about some aspects of the Jenglot that we couldn't quite understand when suddenly Kiprana poured gasoline onto the effigies or the Jenglots in the box. With a burning piece of wood, Kiprana torched the contents in the box. On the burning of the Jenglot, which is happening right now, after they put, they put some Suddenly, a few people in the audience started screaming hysterically. The Ustas and Kiprana took some time to exercise those who were in hysteria. It appears that this whole scenario seemed to have been staged because we recognize that the people who became possessed or hysterical were the same people that Kiprana brought with him. But then I realized that this may be what the audience wants to see. Stay with us as I decide to stay alone in one of the school's room after this. It was banging on that wall. We have only touched upon the tip of the iceberg in understanding the huge paranormal business in Indonesia. I believe it would be wise to also meet a dean from one of Jakarta's top universities to give us an insight into this phenomena. This is Professor Dr. Nozenki of Universitas Negeri Jakarta's Faculty of Social Sciences. There are many dukuns or spiritualists and I realise that it's actually a lucrative business. May I know how such a business came about? Paranormal. The urban folk in Jakarta are hungry for supernatural matters and they seek to find it through the television. And the shamans are willing to facilitate and exploit this. And when TV stations realize that the public is interested in the supernatural, they feel that it could be recreative for them to commercialize it. The Dukun is authentic, but because of entertainment, they have to elaborate, they have to dramatize. But the elaboration and the dramatization is not necessarily fake. The real ones, usually upon finishing their work, they need to expel the energy by vomiting. And secondly, they need to soak themselves in water so that the energy will not engulf them. Number three, thirdly, smoke. smoke. The energy that is called upon through supernatural means, he needs to expel smoke. The fake ones do not show any of these three attributes. We return to our investigation of the old Catholic school with Kiprana, and he is taking us deep into the basement of the school. We're now going down to the basement, not knowing what to expect. Kiprana explains that he feels a lot of restless energy down here. At the moment, he is using my watch to transfer energy of the sosok, which is little-sized beings, but they have faces that is elderly, probably around 50 years old. That's the being that's present here in this corner that he's connecting with. Hold. 
really cold and now really hot. It's, in it's, it's burning my skin. Hot. What just happened is that my watch was burning that man's arm until it suddenly became normal again. And now Kiprana will attempt to trap an entity into the bottle. Saya mau coba masukkan ke ke sini ke botol. What you are seeing is Kiprana trying to spit out the entity into the bottle. But somehow, when he did that, the bottle broke and the entity seemed to have taken off and Kiprana immediately followed its trail. It's the same thing now that you were trying to catch or it's a beda, beda new lagi. entity? Smell? Hmm? Smell it. Huh? It's very interesting what Kiprana can do. For me, it is about not just mere coincidence, but the timing and how consistently when he asks for their presence, they present themselves, of course, not what we expect to see a full form, but in sound, in destruction and moving of the trees, which is quite interesting. The blood thing, obviously there, and he didn't cut himself. So that has left me with more to think about. Let's now go outside for another ritual called so, Pembuktian, which is the ritual of finding evidence. Ready for the challenge? I'm left alone down here in the basement of this structure. Over there on the table, there are some balls, empty plastic bottles, and there is flour on the floor. And the theory is, if there is presence of astral beings, when they step on the flour, it will glow. So now, we shall wait. It is 3 o'clock in the morning and I am alone in this room with only a chair to accompany me. Everyone else is outside, allowing whatever entities present to make their appearance to me. There was a thud or a bang again on the overhang. I think that's what it's called, the overhang or the roof over there. Before you came down, it was banging on that wall, like bang, bang. Lebih banyak suara-suara di luar ya, dari hmm. sini? Uh, noise, not suara, not a voice, but noise. Jadi banyak aktivitas yang bising. 
tepung yang 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 kita uh, sebar hmm. ini ternyata ada di sini yes oh, oh. itu tuh 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 ada lagi hmm. si ah and then sini here oh this one no one was here with the flour because we sprinkled it up in the front so now you have Flour sprinkles, fresh ones. They're not flat or dry. Banyak sekali bekas seperti jejak yang yang memang sengaja ditinggalkan oleh entah sosok entah apa. Tapi yang jelas tidak ada orang yang yang berlalu-lalang di seputaran sini. Tapi anehnya ada ada fenomena seperti ini. Personally, if you ask me, I think that the commercialization of paranormal practice is somewhat dramatized. Why? Because it's entertainment. And we all know that with entertainment, we want something quick, stunning and astonishing. How do we differentiate the knowledge from all the sensational effects? This is when the information by Professor Norzinki strikes that balance because he explains how far back in time and history that paranormal beliefs began with the mixing of different cultures and variety bringing forth a lot of substance that creates the foundation in how many people think until today. So, is paranormal practice real? Is it accurate? Can we believe in it? That is something you need to ask yourself minus the drama and the theatre.